My favourite Stuart 5A steam engine part 2, taking a closer look at the engine and making some adjustments. And why am I going to make some adjustments? Well the engine is running quite well, but it's not 100% even at both ends of the stroke. I think the slide valve on this engine is just a fraction too long if I want to be picky. I just wanted to tweak the valve timing as I usually do, but I found that there was a problem. I could not find an allen key that perfectly fitted the grub screw in the eccentric sheave. I had an idea what the problem may be, so I removed the eccentric sheave and removed the grub screw to have a closer look at it. I thought that the hexagon part of the grub screw may be worn, but I was quite surprised when I saw this, a small crack in the grub screw itself. And in this magnified image, you can see that it's quite a serious crack. I have a good idea how this happened. I obsessively tweak steam engines, and I must have used an allen key that was too small. That's the only way I can think of being able to put enough pressure on the hexagon part of the scrub screw to crack it. And it's the first time I've seen this phenomenon. Needless to say, I replaced it. At this stage, I'm going to show you an edited extract from the series Rebuilding a Stuart 5A Steam Engine. When I rebuilt this engine, I used a brand new crankshaft that I bought off a man called Bruce Davy, who used to run Bruce Engineering, a company who used to sell Stuart castings many years ago. This edited clip shows me fitting the crankshaft to the engine. I think the original plan with this engine was to sleeve the bearings. And many times I've contemplated doing this. So in this one instance, I'm going to sleeve these bearings and make it so I have a removable centre part. And when they wear, I can just pull out the sleeve and make another sleeve because it's much quicker to make a simple sleeve than it is to make these split bearings. In order to get this bearing bush to be a really good fit in the original bearings, I'm taking great care with it. I've fastened both halves of the bearing together with a couple of cable ties, and I keep trying the original bearings on the piece that I'm machining, and by testing the size of the part that I'm machining before every pass, I can get a very, very accurate fit. And once I get the part quite close to the size that I need, I frequently test it with the bearing and I will only take a cut along the full length of the work once I make sure that it isn't too small. The next step was to fit these bearing bushes to their respective main bearings and drill through the oil hole. I'm using the parting tool in the Boxford lathe to cut a very small groove around the centre of the bearing bush, exactly where the oil hole is. And I'm doing this because if ever the bearing bush was to rotate in the main bearing, then the crankshaft would become starved of oil. But by machining this shallow groove all the way round, it doesn't really matter if the bearing bush moves in the main bearing. The crankshaft will still receive lubrication. It's a belt and braces approach because this bearing bush is not going to rotate in the main bearings. Once the main bearing top caps are tightened down, the pressure of the split bearing will hold the bush in place. At the moment, I'm just doing a quick dry assembly of the crankshaft in the bearings with the top caps on. And there is a problem. One of the top caps is smaller than the other. Both of these top caps are very substantial castings, and even the thinner one of the two has more than enough strength to hold the bearings in place. And the other thing I'm not happy about is the amount of side play on the crankshaft. This side play is controlled to a certain extent by the position of the big end brasses between the crank webs. Obviously the big end brasses are fastened to the connecting rod, which fastens to the crosshead, so it can't move very far. Provided, of course, that the big end brasses are a good fit between the crank webs. There is a quick fix for this, and all you have to do is fit a silicone o-ring, or a Viton o-ring, onto the crankshaft between the crank webs and the bearings. I've used this trick several times on smaller steam engines, and the good thing is, it stops the side-to-side -side play, and it stops the tapping that you get with side-to-side -side play, as the crank web taps against the bearing itself. I've also used silicone o-rings on crankshafts to prevent oil loss down the front of the engine, and this seems to work quite well. And as I'm experimenting with this engine, I think I'll fit oil seals to both sides of the bearings. If I machine a very small amount of metal off the bearing bushes that are made from both ends, and this will allow the o-rings to locate neatly into the main bearings. I've worked on quite a few Stuart 5A steam engines over the years, and there's often been a problem with the bearings, 
because they're worn, the top caps become ineffective and act as a clamp. And I've also seen quite a lot of scored 5A crankshafts caused by over-tightening of the top caps. I may be wrong, but this system seems to be much simpler. I'm using the top caps to clamp the main bearings to hold the bushes in place. And when the bushes get worn, clamping the top caps is not going to do anything, so I just loosen the top caps, remove the bushes, make two new ones, and refit them to the engine. And all that has to come off the engine is the flywheel and the valve gear eccentrics. Back now to the present. I fitted a new grub screw into the eccentric sheave and in turn refitted the eccentric sheave to the crankshaft. And I can tell already that it's much better. My normal Allen key for this size of grub screw fits perfectly. Thinking about it, I realised that this must have happened when I built the engine and maybe the position of the eccentric sheave had slipped on the crankshaft. When I refitted the eccentric strap and the lubricator linkages, the engine ran OK, but it was a little bit lumpy. And although the admission point was in the right place just before top dead centre, it didn't run too well. That's why I think the slide valve is a fraction too long. But I'm not going to do anything about that. I want the engine to be able to run successfully at both high and low speeds. And the last run I gave this engine was on steam and it ran beautifully. I think some obsessive tweaking is in order. In these clips the engine is running slightly better but it's still not right. I'm not going to show all the grub screw tweaking. But as usual there was a lot. I'm really sorry about this, I can't help myself. By the way, I don't think I have OCD. I have OD, obsessive disorder. I don't have any compulsions as far as I'm aware. Although maybe I do have OCD when I think about it. For instance, whenever I look at anything, I always spell it out in my head. And this happens at an incredibly high speed. Much faster than the speed that the engine reverses at. And I've always done this word spelling ever since I can remember. And another thing, I can remember being potty trained. My memory is photographic and goes back a long way. And that's it, after this last tweak, it's time to take my medication and back to the asylum. By the way, the engine's running a lot better now. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.